Too many choices. Good morning. That was really cool. Thanks for that. How y'all doing? Nice to see all these faces. A couple of costumes. Tis the season, right? I like all these people that dressed up as empty seats. It's really creative. So this month we're talking about paradoxes. And that's going to, you've heard an awful lot about paradox. You know what a paradox is, right? It's those two pieces of wood that you park your boat between. Yeah. That's for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've heard a fair amount of paradox examples over the week, over the month. I'm pretty sure you're going to hear some more today. Last week was the tyranny of the oar. And this week, we're going to take the genius of the and. We're going to marry the two of them together. I'm going to touch a little bit about both of them and try and figure out why we even need to go here and then how we can apply it a little bit into our daily lives. A paradox can be tricky at first. Actually, it can be tricky forever. It's a statement that appears contradictory. But underneath the two statements is what we call that golden thread of truth. I am everything and I am nothing at the same time. Can you see, especially in our metaphysical world, that golden thread of truth that goes between both of those statements? Is that easier to understand than being everywhere and being nowhere at the same time? Yeah, you just, I don't know. Are they different ideas? Or are they just kind of paradoxical paradoxes? <laughs> I've been having a little bit of a challenge writing about paradoxes. Because as I've been going through, going through this, everything I write is really good. But everything I write really isn't all that good. So I'm sitting there trying to figure that out. Somewhere, of course, in between there and underneath is the truth. So here's one for you. We are temporary. We are eternal. A lot of shaking heads. That one makes sense. How might paradoxes apply currently in today's world? Because this world that we're living in has had some interesting challenges lately. Last week, when we were talking about the ore, we found some instances where orness, I might have made that up, orness creates limited options around difficult questions. And then we check this out. So we find ourselves choosing between economic growth or taking care of people. Between technology, technological advances or preserving the environment? How about being conservative or liberal? Having to choose between the good for the many or the good for the few? Taking care of ourselves or taking care of everybody? Personal safety or collective freedom? A lot of these choices are what's going on in the world today. And this concept, this idea of either or, actually keeps us in bondage and stops us from being open to other solutions. Those ors are no longer working. See, if you take that one or and put it in the water, all you do is go around in circles. <laughs> they are also dividing us. And I'm not sure of a time when we've really been as polarized as we are these days. I'm going to ask you guys this. Have you observed out in the world here a lot of my way or the highway kind of thinking? Yeah. That doesn't leave much room for discussion, expansion, or any kind of understanding or compromise. And I expect that you've experienced it. So can you think about 
where a my way or the highway kind of thinking actually has us taken a few steps back. We can talk about that later. It's like the definition of insanity. Let's just do this the way we've always done everything. So what we do is we're looking to these ideas of paradox, these mind games, if you will, these word games, to open up our minds, to open up these options to another possibility. So you got either or. Now you have a third possibility. Is there a fourth possibility? Maybe a fifth? And this is what we want to open our minds to. And that would really help us to find better solutions. I had a whole thing written about what we're doing here. If we played with paradoxes before one of our visioning meetings or what we're going to do, you know, moving forward into this, with this congregation and, and, our, and our center here, that might be a very interesting way to open up our minds, open up our hearts, and have some really crazy ideas. Be a lot of fun. And let that go. I had some, but I forgot them all. Good thing I wrote it down somewhere. Here's a paradox for you. Less is more. That makes sense? Okay, good. Spirituality itself is full of paradox. We are masculine and we are feminine. We are consciousness and matter. We're living in the world, but not of the world. Our inner world and our outer world. This is where we live. And these seeming opposites are actually two sides of the same coin. But mixing the two actually creates a third way. This is what we're looking to do. And that third way is generally bigger than the sum of the first two parts. I love that phrase. They're bigger than the sum of the parts. And that's the energy, and that's what we bring to it, and that's when we bring Gus into things. You know Gus, right? We have some new people. Some people call that what is God. Some people call it universe. Some people call it spirit. Gus. Gus is my friend. We hang. But when you take that energy, then that allows us to become bigger than we would if we were just hanging out in our own space. Our practice is calling us to do that. This is why we do this. So now we're having this paradox available in our toolbox, the one that we use to help create that world that works for everybody. And I think that's interesting again because we're out there looking for tools. Let me find some more tools. Don't we know that all we have to do is look inside? So, I don't know if we'll ever learn, but that's okay. We're human. We're allowed to do that. But we look inside first, and that's where we are our most powerful. Many of us grew up learning to make choices. You remember the night before school where you got to decide if you want to wear these brown pants or these brown pants? Yeah. That felt like a choice. At the time, it didn't feel limited. Later, it became, let me see, ball game or concert? Mexican or pizza? Money or not? Okay, well, that one doesn't work. But to be choosing between this one or that one can be confining. It can be contracting. So... Playing with paradox, again, opens it up. And here's another one for you. If everything is possible, is it possible for something to be impossible? We've got two more months this year of playing with living out loud. And one of our most honored personal spiritual practices is meditation. So I kind of thought that was a paradox too, right? Let's get quiet to live out loud. <laughs> what? But that works. I like to picture the relationship between paradox and contradiction as being twins. Think of them as twins. And then we could acknowledge oxymoron as a younger brother. They're very close. Oxymoron is sort of a semi-paradox wannabe. 
Oxymorons uses contradictions, whereas paradoxes uses contradictory ideas. Contradictory words versus contradictory ideas. And again, there's that thread of truth in the idea that runs through the two words. Contradiction itself, though, can create arguments, maybe fights. Oxymoron's just fun. Just put two words together to have fun, make a point, maybe create a smile. I think the two most popular oxymorons is jumbo shrimp <laughs> and military intelligence. <laughs> Did you know that the word oxymoron itself is actually an oxymoron? So getting back to paradox, it's contradictory only on the surface. So whenever you hear something like that that doesn't seem to make sense, let's try and train ourselves to look deeper, to find a hidden meaning, to find a deeper meaning, one that works for us, because that's where we start. So here's another paradox. Deep down, you're actually quite shallow. <laughs> and staying in this word family, there's a third cousin called Cone. I call it Cone. I think you're supposed to call it Cohen. It's the Zen Buddhist thing, K-O-H-A-N. But when I looked up Cohen on my phone, I ended up with my cousins and Leonard Cohen and <laughs> these guys. So Cone, at least they know what I'm talking about. This is a, a mind game, a puzzle. And it does nothing more, it's designed to do nothing more than just get the student to go deeper. And that's not a bad thing. All that it does is help us to go a little bit deeper. So while a paradox might be, I do not exist, you get that one? A cone would be, what is the sound of one hand clapping? I think it's nice to get the family involved. So again, beat this into you. Paradox, paradox, paradox. Open your mind, grab your attention. If it doesn't make sense, think about it for a minute because up underneath there is probably some great, great wisdom. This is a, a scientific paradox because the scientists have decided that there's this big bang. The big bang is where the universe started, right? And then they're starting to understand this concept that there may be some consciousness, this idea they call God. So the Big Bang was this explosion. So was God here just after the Big Bang? Or was God here before the Big Bang? And if nothing existed before the Big Bang, then what actually was it that exploded? So there had to be something there before there was something there. So is that paradoxically interesting? Or is it interestingly paradoxical? I'm having fun with this. Masculine and feminine energy is paradoxical. We have both, they're opposites, and they work together. And in the spirit of looking deeper into our masculine, see, we are walking paradoxes. Run with that idea for a minute. See what I did there? <laughs> Here's one. It's simple but not easy. But I'm not sure. That may or may not be one. But that's something that we all accept that has a deeper meaning than it's just simple but not easy. Within all this, I came across this concept called Genusian thinking. Janus is a god, an old god with head, faces on both sides of their head. And the idea being that you can actually hold on to two dissimilar ideas at the same time. So this will be a fun practice. Think of your mom as a kid and as your mom at the same time. Hold that image. Think about having a pet and not having a pet at the same time. 
Some of these kinds of ideas, some of these kinds of exercises will help us get more comfortable in the idea and the practice of holding this dissimilar ideas and trying to make something out of it that makes sense. Einstein was able to envision objects moving and stationary at the same time. He envisioned what I read, somebody falling off a building, and there was also a thing with it, I don't know, a bowling ball or a mattress, maybe his wife, I don't know. <laughs> but here they are, they're falling down this building, so it looks like they're moving, but from where they are, they look like they're doing the same thing. So there's a lack of movement, and there's a lot of movement at the same time. And it was that kind of out-of-the-box thinking that allowed him to create this uh, theory of relativity. So that's a real practical example of where this kind of thing works. The opposite of an absolute truth is not a falsehood, but another absolute truth. Paradoxically littering the landscape. What we're trying to do, I talked to my daughter about this, she helped me a little bit. In the business world, it's not an option to not have, and she's an event planner, so it's not an option to not have an idea. You know, you think either or, and she, she was like this, and we tell her either or, and she goes, Daddy, I want both. She came with that. I think that's a gift. But the idea is there has to be another way, because the either or, I think, is pretty much the way we've already done things. And is it working? Can we do something about it? And it can be scary. Because that third option, that fourth option, that fifth option, really? Maybe. But if you go down that path of those extra steps, maybe those first two, one of those first two is the actual answer. But at least you now know it on purpose. It's not just a default that you picked one or two. It's actually doing on purpose now. So no, don't be limited. Go out there and ask stuff. And if you don't know, ask. Because two heads are better than one. That's what my analyst told me. Song reference. You got that? Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> one of the sentences that came out of the I think you guys know this, that CSL kind of gives the speakers an idea of what they might want to speak about. The idea being that CLS all over the planet is really focused on a single idea. And that idea being that that energy of the masses can go out and work towards a common goal. So I got this from that syllabus today. I thought that was interesting. Science of mind is uniquely poised at the tipping point of creating a world that works for all. It says... We must utilize the power of our teaching to bring people together in the solution of a third way. We must utilize the power of our teaching to bring people together. How does that feel to you? Does that sort of make you feel that you're on a little bit of a bigger purpose? that what we do here actually means something? We're kind of all in this together. I don't really have an answer for you. It's all inside. You've got to figure that out yourself. But I will put that out as a question. When you think about that from that angle, does your life feel a little bit more important? It is. Just saying. So reflect on that for a while. And if reflecting's too hard, you can just think about it. <laughs> With this open-minded kind of thinking, we can use the power of our mind to look at challenges, and we can turn them into all kinds of solutions. Again, go crazy. 
think some crazy out of the box idea when you're trying to think of something, and then you can back into what actually makes sense. But going way, way out there is really going to help to open up your mind. And in different ways, this will help to create that world that we look for that works for everybody. It's crazy right now. Right now, the world isn't really working for everybody in it. All we can do is our part, energetically, to see that that moves forward in that direction. And sometimes what we do, it's in a small way, and sometimes in it's a big way. And we don't get to decide if it's a small way or a big way, but we do get to decide what seeds we want to plant. And then we give them out to the universe and let them plant them and have them grow. And it can be a very, very beautiful thing. One more. Paradox. Beginning of the end. What comes before that? The end of the beginning. So, as I wrap this up, I got a question for you. Are you ready to go out there and experience different kinds of thinkings to your same problems in your life? Are you ready to go out there and try and look for that third and fourth and fifth option? Are you ready? Hurry up and wait. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Judy said, owning the feeling, knowing for an absolute fact of the power and the energy of the universe, knowing that it is absolutely all that there is. It is all that there is. We are all that there is, and we are all one with it, individually and as a group. And in this energy is everything that we need, everything that we want, and everything that we can have. And all we need to do is open our minds and our hearts to the perfection that is. So what I know is that we are open. And what I know is that we do act on purpose. And what I know is that we walk and think and talk in a peaceful, oneness kind of way. And what I know that as we drop our essence into the pool of life, vision, you're a pebble, that the ripples that emanate from our thoughts, from our beings, are all good, are all positive, are all helpful, are all compassion, and all help that little bit we can do to make this world a place that really does work. So I know that this is already done because we have spoken it into being. And that's all we need to do. Speak it and own it and know it. It's with great gratitude that I know how this works. So it's with that energy and that love and that gratitude that I let this prayer go into that fertile field that is the action and activity of law itself knowing that it was already done, and it will grow into something absolutely beautiful. So I let it be with great gratitude, and if you anchor this with me by saying, and so it is. Thank you.